Sora is a magical, floaty swordsman who soars through the air with disjoints and mix-ups. He pressures shields like no one has before, carries people across the stage, and is blessed with arguably the best recovery in the entire game, with his huge double jump, versatile specials that mix up his movement, and stall his fall to make him virtually impossible to edgeguard. Those very tools also provide an outrageously powerful advantage and neutral getting his opponents into the air, and keeping them from landing. However, this all comes at a cost, since Sora doesn't have any amazing landing option, and his floaty nature does lead to him getting called out of his jumps, which then coalesces into him dying pretty early with his low weight. And this makes Sora pretty similar to most glass cannons, a character that thrives when they gain an advantage, but struggles the moment they get hit. Normally this would cause consistency issues, but Sora can be incredibly stable if you know the limits of what you can do. This is why players that like Sora are those who excel at finding openings and willing to take risks, whether it's edgeguarding or a nice mix-up. Sora is a contender for the best offstage presence in the game, almost solely because of his high mobility and flexible recovery, and knowing how to use his recovery is the key to playing him well. Sora has one of the highest double jumps, and his keyblade allows him to shark opponents trying the ledge trap, typically through up air and thundaga. In addition, he can stall with all three of his neutral specials, and has an up B which cancels into side B if inputted 7 frames after the last hit. What makes Sora offstage so scary is how much ground he can cover with these three options, allowing him to come back from anywhere, whether it's edge guarding, recovering the ledge, or simply getting off the ledge. How to use each option will depend on the situation, but the general rule is simple. Only use your double jump if it's absolutely necessary and rely more on your specials, since you get them back when you get hit. Where the double jump really shines is through advantage state, as Sora can cover a ridiculous amount of space with his aerials, and his options are as simple as they come, typically coming out fast with medium to high reward. Really, the only aspect that is lacking is his disadvantage state, largely due to his double jump. When getting comboed, there are three main options to escape. Jump, attack, and air dodge. For Sora, jump is not viable, since it's slow. So slow that players can catch it. As such, the best Sora can do is optimize his DI and eventually find a ledge, where he has a lot more options. Neutral and forward air are Sora's most complex attacks and the basis of his combos and neutral. Both are three-part moves whose timings can be mixed up. The interesting bit is when they hit an opponent or their shield. Sora does a little jump to stay airborne and combo into the remaining hits. This also stops Sora's double jump momentum. So, in order to fast fall with either aerial, you have to do so just after you attack. If done correctly, you should land with only the first hit connecting. This is extremely important to master, as it offers a very non-committal pressure option on shield that can also start combos at any percent due to the low scalable knockback. Let's begin with neutral air. At low percents, up tilt and neutral air will be your most reliable follow-ups, as they lead into a majority of Sora's bread and butter. For neutral air specifically, you're going to want to learn how to fast fall the second hit to further mix up your advantage state. This is done by neutral air, wait a little bit, then hit down and A. This essentially allows Sora to combo into whatever he comes up with. 
With heavies and fast fallers, you can loop this multiple times. At high percents, forward and up smash start killing. In neutral, it's a tricky shield pressure tool since hitting a shield will stall Sora in the air. This inherently makes shield grabs much riskier to go for and out of shield very prediction based. Speaking of out of shield, Nair is great for this since it covers both in front and behind, and as we've seen, sets up for combos. Forwarder is a slightly slower neutral air with better damage. The first hit, however, has an array of hitboxes. Hitting the close and middle part of the blade will send away, while the tipper hit sends straight up. Spacing the move makes it safe on shield and can always be used to stall in the air. Combos are slightly different from neutral air, with down tilt becoming a confirm and forward smash being the go-to option for high percents. However, to get the full potential out of these attacks, you must learn the Nair and Fair loops, otherwise known as Noops and Foops. This is done by combining the Fastfall tech with instant double jumps to keep Sora close to the ground and loop opponents across the stage. The inputs are very simple, but the timing is what's important. Instant double jump as quick as you can and buffer a neutral or forward air. Fastfall as soon as you can and repeat this process however many times you want, typically two or three times. For more information, check out the meta of Smash's in-depth guide linked as a card and in this video's description. Back air, unlike the first two aerials, is as simple a move as you can find. A basic backswing with a singular hitbox that sends away. It is safe on shield when spaced and is an overall great option to stop approaches, calling out jumps in or dashes as you can back air twice out of a full hop. The high knockback makes it an amazing option to close out the stock, which gets even crazier with Sora's offstage presence. Combos will typically consist of simple dash attacks, jabs, or grabs. Up air is mainly used for calling out jumps and more importantly, combos. With a hitbox on the key and a trailing hitbox behind, Sora finds use out of up air that few characters can replicate. The generous hitbox allows him to hit most grounded opponents out of a short hop, stopping aerial and grounded approaches at the same time. However, the true potential comes when landing, as it opens up a wide array of combos. Up tilt is your go-to at low percents, though you can initiate the neutral and forward air shenanigans. and mid percents, double jump up air is possible, which actually confirms into an up B. This gets even crazier when you realize that up air is minus 5 on shield, making you completely safe from shield grabs. And even if you don't land safely, you can always space it. Down air is a stall and fall that kills at high percents but is mostly suited for edge guarding. Should you land on stage, there is a landing hitbox offering some protection, though any good player will react and shield this which will probably be followed with a punish. More than anything, down air excels at edge guarding linear recoveries, as the high priority stops anyone from safely hugging the stage, forcing them to tech if they don't want to be stage spiked. 
Also keep in mind Sora can make it back if you buffer a jump or up B right after the down air ends. This is much safer with a jump beforehand, but can be done without. His jab is a simple three-part attack that starts with an overhead swing of the Keyblade. This detail is actually pretty significant, as the hitbox above can function as a niche anti-air to keep opponents grounded. It's Sora's fastest attack at frame 5, and is a nice get-off-me option to set up tech situations. You can jab log with the first two hits, which can actually hit above platforms. And of course, you can combo into it at low percents. Forward tilt can function in one of two forms depending on how it's inputted. Tapping the input gives you a singular strike which is better suited for killing or sending offstage. With the correct timing and positioning, this can be used to two-frame or hit ledge hangs. Hold or mash the input and you get a three-part attack with weaker knockback but better damage. This is generally better to go for at low percents where you can rack up damage and aren't looking to kill just yet. Up tilt is a long-lasting hitbox that functions as a high-commitment anti-air and combo starter, with a scooping hitbox in front of Sora. Because of how long the move lasts, it's probably not great to throw it in neutral. Fortunately, however, there are a number of ways to combo into it. Once you do land the hit is when you can initiate your combos, which will consist of up air, neutral air, and forward air. Down tilt is a simple poke and combo starter. While relatively slow, it is arguably Sora's best grounded option. At low percents, go for an up tilt into an aerial. Or you can try the aerial loops with neutral and forward air. At mid percents, you can start linking into up air. If you want to optimize this combo, however, down tilt, instant double jump up air into an up B for a kill. Admittedly, the window for this is very small, but the reward can be tremendous. Though if you miss the combo window, you can always sell for an up smash kill confirm at high percents, or an up air at even higher. Dash attack is a fast burst option similar to Mario's. Sora baseball slides on the ground with an intangible leg to catch landings and occasionally cross up on shield. There is a strong hit at the start that will kill at high percents, followed by a lingering weak hit more suited for two framing and option coverage. Combo potential is very low, but is still a nice grounded option for quick damage. Forward Smash is a simplistic key swing with a sweet spot on the tip of the key, but unlike other forward smashes, Sora can combo into it with a forward or neutral air as a kill confirm. Outside of this confirm, however, it is a very basic smash attack that you'll save for hard reads. Up Smash is a strong vertical finisher with a scooping hitbox in front of Sora, and again it can be comboed into from a neutraler. This combo potential is really its calling card since it's an average out of shield option and has limited use for platform pressure. Down Smash is a huge stab to the ground, covering a lot of area and sending at a strong horizontal angle. Sora is fully intangible, frames 3 to 6, before getting just the lower body intangibility on frames 7 to 10. This makes it deceptively difficult to intercept, as most attacks will either get high profiled or simply go through his body. The key itself has a hitbox which reaches below the ledge to potentially two frame recoveries, or you can go for a shield break due to the move's insane shield damage. 
but it's still a high committal option, so you'll generally stay clear of it until your opponent is at the ledge. Sora's neutral special can be one of three possible spells that cycle to the next. Fyraga always starts, followed by Thundaga and Blizzaga before cycling back to Fyraga. There is no known way to alter this order, but it shouldn't really matter as it's fairly quick to cycle through the spells. All three can be B reversed and wave bounced, so be sure to mix those movement options into your game. And as mentioned earlier, all three can stall Sora in the air, making them prime options to mix up and stall your recovery. Fyraga is a simple fireball that gets progressively weaker the longer it's out before disappearing completely. It's also the only spell Sora can fire multiple times by repeatedly pressing special. This combined with the relatively low recovery frames makes it very useful to force an approach that you can then punish or even use it to force out a shield or jump that you can approach with a dash grab or aerial respectively. Additionally, you can get a surprising number of combos off of landing a hit, ranging from basic bread and butter combos to kill confirms. And while niche, it can be used to jab block. Thundaga is a high damage spell designed to close out the stock. Sora shoots three thunderbolts that should link into each other, though there are scenarios where the opponent falls out. Either way, the last thunderbolt is the killing hit and is the one you're going to want to focus on connecting. The first Thunderbolt will spawn a little bit in front of Sora, meaning it does have a blind spot and will whiff on opponents at point-blank range, though this can somewhat be remedied by jumping and then using it. Combos are possible, albeit pretty limited, with the last Thunderbolt having potential at low percents, where Sora can follow up with an aerial. However, its main use is to stop approaches and edge guard, as the large long-lasting hitboxes will likely force some kind of reaction. And this also makes it pretty useful to cover the ledge when recovering yourself, or you can opt to ledge trap with it, as the correct positioning can catch ledge hangs and force a reaction that you can then punish. Standing just past the ledge to connect the first bolt, around a roll's distance for the second, and finally just past half stage for the third. And of course, these distances will shorten if combined with a jump. Blizzaga is a close-range flurry that freezes upon contact. Unfortunately, the freeze is extremely easy to mash out, which inherently limits its use at low percents. At high percents, however, it becomes a scary situation, as Sora can opt to punish immediate mashouts or wait to punish the no mash. Whichever you predict, up smash and up B tend to be the best options for follow-ups. Up smash if you're hard predicting when they'll mash out, and up B if you want a little less reward but more coverage when they break out. In addition to simply stopping approaches, Blizzaga finds a ton of use at the ledge with the long-lasting hitbox able to cover neutral getup and dealing a ton of shield damage in the process. Sonic Blade is one of Sora's main recovery tools while also being an effective burst option. The move, like a lot of Sora's kit, is a 1 to 3 part attack. The first burst will go left or right depending on how you inputted the move, 
After the first hit is when your inputs will dictate its functionality. Holding special will cause Sora to lock onto an opponent, within a specific range. Letting go of special but holding a direction on the control stick will have Sora dash in that direction without the lock-on mechanic. And letting go of both the control stick and special will stop Sora from doing another dash. Similar to Pikachu's quick attack, Sonic Blade's main draw is its mix-up potential with the plethora of angles and combinations. This alone makes Sora one of the most difficult characters to edgeguard, as the opponents essentially have to guess where you'll end up. The only real bad thing about it is it won't sweet spot the ledge unless you space it correctly. Offensively, it acts as a nice burst option and even sets up for platform text chases with the first hit that you can read and react to. and in some situations can be used to chase in the air and maybe score a kill. However, it's extremely unsafe when shielded, with enough end lag to almost guarantee a punish. The lock-on can also be punished by simply running away from Sora or shielding at the ledge. Aerial Sweep is Sora's other main recovery tool and is similar in animation to Link's spin attack. However, Sora will rise regardless of being used on the ground or in the air. Outside of recovery, it's an effective out of shield option that can kill at high percents. However, it will only hit in front of Sora at the start, meaning a B reverse is necessary to punish cross ups. And as seen throughout the video, it can finish combos to kill off the top. Counter-Attack is a somewhat basic counter with a couple of quirks, the most notable being it temporarily stuns the opponent before landing the attack. This can make linear recoveries with hitboxes extremely easy to edgeguard. The only downside is its relatively small hitbox which will miss on correct spacing. And since he's the last DLC character, the counter kind of reflects projectiles. Sora gains ownership of it, but doesn't change the direction the projectile is going. So while you can be safe from projectiles, there's next to no risk for your opponent to spam you with them, though it can make for some pretty wacky interactions. Last up are Sora's throws, and are as basic as they come. Forward throw has no combo or kill potential, but you'll still want to use it at the ledge to send opponents off stage to set up an edge guard. Back throw is Sora's only realistic kill throw and will start killing at the ledge around 105% on lightweights, 120 on mid, and 145 on heavies. Up throw can be nice for setting up a juggle, but nothing is guaranteed and doesn't kill until extremely high percents. This will likely be your least used throw. Down throw is the go-to combo throw, which will start comboing into neutral air around 20 to 30 percent, and up airs at mid percent. Sora flies through Smash with mix-ups that breed creativity. He's simple to play, yet difficult to master, and feels like no one else in the game. A true man of the sky, and a perfect final character to Smash Ultimate. Schmix him up with your aerials, kill often with your up B, and even if you learn nothing from this guide, as Walt Disney once said, Laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, dreams are forever.
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing if you'd like to see more. Huge thank you to the Sora Discord server for helping me compile the information in this guide. If you're a Sora main and want to learn more about his meta, be sure to join the server. Link along with the music used is in the description. If there's a character you want me to cover, let me know in the comment below. That's all I have for now, and I will see you all next time.